<clears throat> Praise the Lord and thank you for tuning in to today's program, Hand of God Live service, a service that we air weekly here at the continent, Columbus, Ohio, the north side of Columbus, Ohio. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. And we'll be speaking on the subject dealing with adoption today. And as we always do, let us begin with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory, we give you honor, Father God, for who you are and all the wonderful things you've done. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that your name will always be worthy, Father God. Just ask and pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you touch us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, Father God. Calm the storm, Father God. Allow us to see you in any, each and every situation that we walk and live in, Father God, that we might be able to give you the glory. Just ask and pray, Father God, that the meditation of my heart and words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight, Father God. Touch those, Father God, who have an earnest desire to know and hear from you, Father God. Allow them to hear you and not me, Lord Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, for those that are lost, that desire to be found. Use us, Father God. Send us and we'll go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said, we'll be speaking on the subject concerning adoption. As we prepare for the next feast, the spring feast, um, which is known as Pentecost, or as the Jews may call it, Shavuot, which is 50 days from the Sabbath around Passover. As we prepare for that, the Lord has impressed on my heart that there are some who just simply don't understand that they have access to all the rights as the original people. Now we know, without a shadow of any doubt, that one, we're not the original Israelites, we are not the original Jews, and we're not the original Hebrews. So in knowing that, and knowing the God we serve, when you come into the, the knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ, the, the very one of the very first things that God impressed upon my heart in reading the Bible is that what does any of that have to do with me? That is one thing I definitely had to know because you can't completely sell out to anything unless you're a part of it. Think of it in the form of a relationship. Say a man meets a woman and they decide to get married. Unless, even the, the, the religions where they allow multiple wives, and if there's wife number eight, she still is the property and possession of the husband. There ain't no multiple husbands. And what we need to understand in the body of Jesus Christ is that there are millions and millions and millions of believers. Some are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are Hebrews, some are Asian, whatever. So if, if God was to respect one over another, it wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't even seem fair. What kind of God would, would be a respected person? And that's one thing God made it abundantly clear in his word is one that he is not a respecter of persons and also that it is a sin to be a respecter of persons. So I'm here to share with you today that by any way, shape, or form, if you think that you don't belong in the body of Jesus Christ, or you think you can't inherit the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're absolutely 100% wrong. Now, the only thing that separates you from the next believer sitting next to you is your knowledge of who your Father in Heaven is, your, your knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Because if you don't know what it is that you have or what you have access to, there is no way you can get it. It's, it's as simple as that. Without the knowledge of Jesus Christ, there are, there are things you're not going to experience in this life as a believer. Now, there's grace and mercy throughout our entire life. There's things that we're going to get by, by, you know, people go to work, you work 40 hours, you get paid for 40 hours. You work, uh, you, you put money in a bank, you save money, that's the money that you have. But there are things that God promised us by way of promise that you will never, ever get, see, or experience without the knowledge and understanding of who Jesus Christ is. So if someone wants to call you, I want to always preach sometime by examples to try and help people who don't know anything about the Bible understand what I'm talking about. So if someone was to call you and told you that you have inherit, inherited a million dollars, but you have to prove kinship, how would you do it? If there was no biological tie to the person who left you the money. So somebody called you and said, look, I'm a lawyer for so-and-so, and you haven't inherited millions of dollars. Now you're excited. Because who wouldn't want a million dollars? Even today's term, a million is not a million like it was yesterday, but guess what? It's more than I have, so <laughs> I will be happy about getting a million dollars. But I have to prove that I'm related to the person. 
Now, I'm thinking, like, I don't have no Uncle Buck or Leroy or whatever the case is, so how am I going to prove that I am related to this person by kinship? How do you expect to receive promises from God through a people that you do not accept as your own? Meaning that in the Bible it speaks that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was given promises. They were given things that you're not connected to in any way, shape, or form by blood. But they're promises that God promised us through them. In other words, when you read them, you, all throughout scripture, that's why we say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was promises that was given to them that the whole body of Christ have inherited. And it's a sad, I hate to make this statement, but it's the truest statement, that one of the truest statements you probably will ever hear me make. There are so many millions of people that ain't gonna never even take, touch, taste, or see any of those promises. And God shared with me years ago before he started me on this journey of understanding the feast of the Lord is that this is the way that he has prescribed for us to receive those things. And it's unfortunate that some preachers, I'm not putting anybody on blast, it's so unfortunate that some preachers would rather preach the traditions of men, basically the things that I started, okay, this is the this is the buckwheat church of God in Christ. Uh, when we come in here, we're going to stand when I walk in. When we, when we feel, uh, when, we, when you hear a certain sound, we're going to clap. Uh, when we do this, we're going to wear this color. Those are traditions of men. Those are things that men have made up for whatever reason. And in their, in their hearts and their minds, they're thinking, well, I'm doing this to help the people stay faithful, to help the people stay disciplined. The God ain't never called us to do that. Your name is not Holy Ghost Junior. Your job is not to prescribe things that's not in the Bible to help the people be saved or, as they say, to win souls. That's not our job. Our job is to do what? Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Let me get back on here because i got a lot of stuff. Adoption by definition means the act of taking something on as your own. The act of taking something on as your own. Adoption usually refers to a legal process of becoming a non-biological parent. Non-biological parent. So in other words, you're taking something as your own, but you know you're not the biological owner of that property. You're not the person who owns that. And that's what Jesus Christ, in, in a nutshell, my whole sermon, that's really what Jesus did to us. Because we're not related to Joseph and Mary in any way, shape, or form. We're not blood related to them. But as, as I'm going to show you in Scripture... God took off, and when you know, this is the knowledge that you get to put you on the path to receive the blessings of Abraham. Because I was wondering, I said, God, I'm about to speak on Pentecost. I had it all typed out. It said Pentecost preparation one. The Lord was like, hold on. They, they, there's, there's still some people out there who desire to know, but they just simply ain't getting it to understand why it is they have a right to the things that I said. I know so many people, traditional, I love them, love traditional pastors, will preach me under the rug by the gift of preaching. But as far as what they're talking about, you're not helping people understand that you have a right to not be poor. You have a right to have a happy life. You have a right to speak death away from your family. You have a right, let me get, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. So adoption comes from the old French word adoptar, meaning to choose for oneself. We're usually talking about from the Hebrew, but this is what the Lord showed me. It comes from the French word adoptar, meaning to choose for oneself. The nature and condition of a true disciple of Christ who by receiving the spirit of God into their souls become the sons of God. The nature and condition of a true disciple, I want you to hear this, a true disciple of Christ who, who by receiving the spirit of God into their souls become the son of God. And I hear the Lord saying to me in this scripture, I only heard in my notes that, that you will prosper as your soul prosper. Everybody wants, you speak the word prosper, everybody is excited. But he said as your soul prosper. And this, this thing says the nature and condition of a true disciple of Christ. So if I'm going to be a true disciple of Christ, and that disciple means someone who follows, who by receiving the spirit of God enter their souls become the sons of God. So that's how you become the sons of God. Is you're a true disciple when you receive the spirit of God into your soul. Not just into your lifestyle, what you're doing, what you're saying, you know, you speak in tongues. That stuff's all good and dandy. But unless you receive the, look, can't nobody tell me who I'm not. People try, oh, you can't sing. Some girl told me yesterday, uh, you were singing on Facebook, that's horrible, stop it. She said, you can't sing. That stuff doesn't bother me. But if you tell me I'm not a son of God, you got a fight on your hand. Because I know who I am. That's one thing the enemy want to constantly do is to tear you down and help you understand who you ain't. How does he do this? He lets you know you're not going to be successful. You can't be successful. Your past is, is greater than your future. That's his job. People come to me with that kind of crazy stuff. I'm thinking, like, can you read? 
What does the Bible say? Quit repeating what the devil says and repeat what the Bible says. Because that's what it says in Revelation 20, 20, 10. That when the devil tries to tell you about your future, tell him about his future. It's just really that simple. Now let me get back on point. Adoption. Galatians 4. I've got a lot of scriptures here, so you might just want to follow along. Galatians 4, 1 through 10. Uh, it's going to be our, our foundational scripture. So I'm going to turn there and we can stay there, but I'm going to be flipping to a couple other ones as we go on. But Galatians 4, 1 through 10, we'll get there eventually, but I have some other ones I want to read before there. But this is the foundational scripture. So if you ever want to refer to this particular word, you can use Galatians 4, 1 through 10 as the foundational scripture that we built this sermon off of. I should have already had it in my Bible, but got all the other ones in the paper. So we're talking about adoption, and we're all adopted into the body. Now, there are some Jews that's here that's just living today on the earth that, who, that are connected to connected to connected. They can trace their roots all the way back. And it's funny how they can, but the average person be like, well, I got Indian in me, I got this in me, I got that in me. But here it is that, you know, believers, they'd rather know what their natural connection is to the world versus their spiritual connection because your spiritual connection somebody to move my galatians their spirits their spiritual connection is going to outweigh their natural connection i'm gonna tell you right now even if your daddy is the richest person on the face of the earth um your spiritual connection outweighs your natural connection and until you have an understanding of that and you start walking in it you're gonna struggle why because there are things that you can speak from the spirit and affect the natural it, can't, it don't work the other way around, but it works from the spirit to the natural, not the natural to the spirit. That's why the spirit is more important. So when people come to me and we talk about things, and I hear them talking flesh, 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 flesh. I was like, no wonder you defeated. You haven't mentioned one thing about what your heavenly father who have adopted you can do to change that very situation you're talking about. So, the very uh, Ephesians 1.5, because like I'm going to be all over the place, but Galatians, we're going to end up there. Having predestinated us to the, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Have been predestinated us. In other words, it was predestinated. What's that mean? That means before you was born. Before you was born, before you was created, you was predestined for a specific mission, a journey. That's, that's something you need to know for yourself. Two things God has, you, has really impressed on me in the last few years to help people to understand is identity and also your lineage. You need to know who you are and what your purpose is. Make your calling and election sure. But first you need to know who you are. Before you can understand what your calling is, you've got to have a firm foundation of who you are. Jesus Christ is Lord. People will say it with their mouth, but they won't say it with their life. So having predestined us unto the adoption, unto the children of Jesus, by Jesus Christ, to himself. My purpose is to Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. And I want to say this, because I hear it in my spirit, is that people got to understand, well, if I'm living for him, I'm not going to be able to do the things I want to do. You're not a son. Because being a son or daughter of God, of God, it's his good pleasure to give you, you, you know that off rip. Now, it may not seem like it at times. Lord knows, I know it. It may not seem like it at times, but he have you in his, your, 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 everything that you, all your desires, he's put in you. But it's according to his will. And the only way we understand his will when we walk it out by faith and obedience. So in other words, you'll never see the things you want to see. Now, being I've been married a few times, and I knew in my heart what God told me. He's like, look, you can give her anything and everything she wants, but in the time that I tell you to do it. Now, I don't tell them that because it will drive me crazy. I'm like, can I get this? Yeah, soon. Can I get that? Yeah, soon. And I'm thinking like, I learned a long time ago, I heard a bishop say, uh, delayed is not denied. And, and, you know, we live in the microwave generation, and people want stuff right now. But one thing God shared with me as a head of a house is that even the kids is like, can I have this? Yeah, but not now. And it's, it's, it's an easy answer because we ain't got the money. We can't have it. But God was like, I won't perform that thing, but not in this particular time. So we need to understand something, that things have been predestinated unto us by the adoption through Jesus Christ. And, but it's, it says, according to the good pleasure, good pleasure of his will. How do you know you're dealing with a mature Christian? It's because they want his will, not their will. Romans 9 8 says, That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the 
the promise or count it for the seed. Just talked about that a few seconds ago that the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. No, you're not related to him by your flesh. There is nothing in your flesh that connects you to God, Jesus Christ. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's nothing in your flesh. There's nothing on your fingerprints. There's nothing in your skin tone. There's nothing in your flesh that can connect you to a sovereign and righteous God because we know that there's sin, sin in our flesh. So when people say, well, I'm a Jew, but so what? What's that mean? It means nothing. Where's your faith? Is Jesus Christ Lord? John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. But as many as received him, so when you receive him, he gives you power. What's the power? We all know. It's no mystery. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost bears witness to the truth. He got, we just talked about God as a spirit. How do you know who God is? How do you know what God is? Yes, the spirit should confirm what God is saying. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. The power was the Holy Ghost. That was the spirit. Of, that was his own spirit inside of you. And it speaks to the spirit. Like, how do you know when, when, when the word is the word, what a spirit? When somebody says something off, alarm goes off in me. I'm like, hold on. That sounded good, but something's wrong with what they just said. My spirit is like grieved, like, oh, that don't sound right. People always, well, Sean, how do you know? I don't know nothing. But when somebody says something crazy, I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. That, ain't, that don't sound right. I mean, that's how the devil did with Jesus in the, in the wilderness when he was being tempted, is that he was twisting the scripture, and Jesus was constantly checking him. Like, you know, it's also written. In other words, you're taking that scripture out of context, because the Bible says, study to show thyself approval, work with that need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. You can't just apply the scripture where you want it. Because it's not your will, it's his will. And a lot of believers do that. Well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. That has nothing to do with your situation. If that was the case, we, whenever we want something, we just put the Bible there. The Bible says, speak those things or not. I'm going to go jump in this car and drive. Well, you're going to jail. You just stole the car. That's not what that scripture means. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. To them that believe on his name, Jesus. For as many, for as many... 14, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. What? You got to be led by the Spirit of God. That's the confirmation that you are a child of God. Because you're led by the Spirit, not by your flesh. Because we're not connected to him in our flesh, we're connected to him in our spirit. For ye have not received a spirit, we're in John 1, 2, 12. Well, now we're in 15. John chapter 1, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's a big scripture right there. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But guess what the Bible says right here? It says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, you used to live a fearful lifestyle. What does that mean? All your choices was based off of fear. Well, I'm scared of being homeless, so let me get a job, buy a house, and pay bills. Well, I'm scared of not being, that this person leaving me, so let me just do what they want me to do so they won't leave me. I mean, we, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of ways we were taught to live in this natural world was based off of fear. You better go to college, get a degree, because if you don't do that, you can't get a job, you can't get a job, you can't get a house, you can't get a house, you can't get a car, you can't get a car. A lot of times, materialistic women, gold diggers, you can't get none of that, you can't get no woman. That's the spirit of fear. Because all, if all your decisions and choices are based off of fear, the scripture says, for you, ye have not received the spirit again, excuse me, the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of what? Adoption. What's the spirit of Adoption. I mean, look, I don't have to base anything off of fear. In other words, when all hell's breaking loose, I'm like, I know who my dad is. He told me to stand right here. Yeah, but, but there's a storm coming and you better move. Mm -mm, you move. God told me to stand right here. You have not received that spirit of fear. Okay. But the God says, stand still. This is where I'm standing. You can't let people, circumstances, situations dictate what God then told you because you have received the spirit. spirit. There's a spirit as, of adoption. We always talk about negative things. Spirit of depression, spirit of murder, spirit of this, spirit of that. There's a spirit of adoption. What's that mean? To let you know that I belong to Jesus Christ and nothing will befall me. Nothing. And it says, where we cry, Abba, Father. I don't have time to get the Abba, Father. Study it on your own. There's a reason why that's used in that context. 16, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. I was ahead of myself. I already spoke about that. You don't even have to worry about knowing what God is saying to you because the spirit will bear witness of itself. All you need to do is know what the word is saying, 
Because the word is God speaking, but when God's speaking, he will confirm it within you, the spirit that's in you. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So guess what? His spirit will bear witness to the spirit. If in your mind, I hear God saying, make it clear, if in your mind you're not superseding what the spirit is saying. Now, God's not going to force you to do nothing. The choice is ultimately yours. People always, well, how do you know uh, this is that, this is that? Well, the spirit should bear witness to the truth. If there ain't no, if your flesh is, oh, I love this and I love that, what is the spirit saying? Verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we also will be glorified together. In other words, no matter what you're going through, no matter how long you're going through it, if you suffer with Christ, in other words, if you stand your ground, if you say, hold on, he's my daddy, I'm standing here. Don't look right, don't sound right. To some people, you don't think I'm acting right, but I'm going to stand here on God. If you stand your ground, if you stand your ground, you will be glorified. What's that mean? Like it said in John 17, 4, it says, Jesus said, you know, I've glorified you. I've done the things you, you told me to do. Now glorify me. It's time, it's time for the cross. You know, it's time to be glorified. There's a time and a season for everything. And you may be going through. That's the season. That's your season of going through. We, we go to, to go through, to come out, to go to, to go through, to come out, to go to. Why? Because we're salt of the earth. And while we're doing all that, sinners are looking at us like, wow, she's just a strong Christian. Look at all that stuff. They don't hear sometimes the things you say. They see what you're doing. And they know you know, you're, you, they know you know God by the fact that you're standing in the storm instead of freaking out like everybody else. Like, I want to know the God they know because look at them, man. They just, wow, they're taking like a chant. And, 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 and I never think about that type of stuff. I'm so, I fi fix my face like Flint. When I'm going through, when I feel like stuff is coming in like a storm, you, you know when a storm is coming. You go outside, you look at it, like, wow, it's still dark. It's about to tear up. Same way in your life. When stuff starts going crazy, people start rebuking the devil and blah, blah, blah. Don't you understand that he worked for the Lord? And God is about to be glorified in you in a situation that he's trying to touch somebody's life to be saved and say, what must I do to be saved? So Christians so apt to like, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. He said, like, Jesus sent me. Why are you trying to rebuke me? He sent me to bless you. Because when you pass this test and go through the storm, he's going to be glorified through you. You're going to get promoted and elevated. That's why it's so, you can't have no traditional teaching because that's not how you tore up from the floor. I asked God, I said, how is it that a person go to church for 30 years faithfully, speak in tongues, pay temple tax tithes and all that stuff, roll, flip, back, flip, do all this stuff, and still ain't moved one inch towards the knowledge of who you are, the traditions of men. To belong to a gym or a place where you work out, all they're really concerned about is your membership. They can care less if you get in shape by one inch or one bit. It's not their business if you get in shape. And why do I say that? Because the same with some churches, unfortunately. All they want is your membership. Not concerned about you growing spiritually. Matter of fact, if you grow spiritually, you might leave. So I don't want you to grow. I want you to keep coming and paying. I'm not putting nobody on blast. I'm just telling it the way a T.I. is. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes are the same thing. They just want people to come to the to temple. When Jesus came and revolutionized the way that the minute the gospel was preached, they was upset. We got to kill this dude, man. Look at our members. Look, look at our chairs. We getting empty. I'm going to have to go get a job, man. I can't work. Look at these hands. I've been working in the temple all my life. I got soft hands. I ain't trying to go get no job. Ain't no numbers in here. The, 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 the offerings is going down. We got to kill this dude. He got to quit preaching freedom. People getting up and accepting their callings and going to do ministry. But we don't understand as preachers that our job is to send people out and empower people to take the word. Or he said he's giving us dominion. We don't take dominion by buying guns. We take dominions as taking a, a person who was on drugs or alcohol or was a whoremonger when they come in one way. And it shouldn't take, honestly, it shouldn't take longer than three years to give them the word, preach them the word, and empower them with the word, for they're ready to accept their calling, even in, in that body or somewhere in the world, to take dominion. We don't have that mindset. Jesus showed us the way. But this comes from adoption. And if children, 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs of Christ, if so that we, we, that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 18, for I reckon that the servants of this present time are not worthy to be compared the glory that shall be revealed in who? In us. Let me read that again. I read it kind of fast. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, a to the man, Lord have mercy, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in who? In us. He's going to reveal the glory in us. 19, for if we, if, if for 
for the earnest expectation, excuse me, for the earnest expectation of the creature, this is Romans 8, 14 through 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are people waiting, literally waiting to see you be manifest, to see you walk in the glory of God. Because they say, I've been waiting all my life. I hear the Lord using by way of example that when uh, the, 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 the man of God heard Jesus cry when Mary was headed to the temple to have him uh, circumcised, and he cried, uh, the Bible says consolation. In other words, he said, oh, that's, that's that cry. That's that, that's that voice I've been waiting all my life to hear. And the Bible said that he would not see death until he heard that cry. He was hanging out at the temple. He was a, a priest. And he's like, that's, that's, that's the sound. Somebody's waiting to hear your sound. Somebody's waiting to hear you preach, talk, testify, sing, something. It says, it says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But guess what? They can't hear that when we're complaining and talking about how bad this life is. And it's supposed to be bad because Adam and Eve failed. This earth sucks. They messed it up. This is not what we're, this is not who we are. This is not what we do. All this stuff is, is, is irrelevant. And the sons and the, and the daughters of God understand that. Clothes, cars, men, women, children. We got to mature to the, to the, for, the, for the reasons of why we're here at some point in this walk. And it's only then will God release and trust you with the things that you, that you think you want. For ye, it says in uh, Galatians 3.26, For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's all over, right? That's it. That kills, that kills. All these people talk about, you need to do this, you need to do this Jewish, you need to do this Hebrew, you need to do these, flip over this, you need to wear this. Look, ye, ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You can't go, you can't purchase faith. You can't, you can't go to a store and like, uh, I'll take a faith and a 2X. You can't do it. That, that's the only way we, we were connected to Jesus Christ. That's why people, I don't want to put no, oh, I really don't want to talk about nobody. But that's, that's, that's how we're connected. We're not connected by me wearing this black shirt. We're not connected even by meeting today on the, on the Sabbath. This is not our connection to him. We're connected to him by faith. What is faith? Now faith is the some things hope for the evidence of things not seen. When you speak those things that, that, that are not, that are so, because you understand who you are, that's the faith that you have in God. They're like the thief on the cross. He didn't get baptized. He didn't speak in unknown tongues. One of them recognized Jesus. One of them didn't. He said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't go through none of the traditional nonsense that people try to make people go through to get to Jesus Christ. He just made a proclamation from his mouth by faith. Because he didn't see Jesus do none of the miracles. He may have heard of him while he was out stealing, picking pockets. But at the end of the day, he didn't see nothing. All he saw him up on the cross, he was like, you hear this guy talking? He talking about forgive him for they... Why would a regular man be talking like that? I'm up here talking about, no, I really didn't steal. He's like, hold on, man. He must be the son of God. That's how he accepted him. John 1.13 says, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh. I love that part. Which were born not of blood, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of, of man, but of God. My mom, my dad, my grandmother, my grandfather, man, it's not of the blood. I came to the realization a long time ago. I've never met my biological father. He was a sperm donor. That was his job. If he had no other job on this earth that I may be able to preach the gospel was to impregnate my mom so I could preach the gospel. You gotta understand, God got a will that's greater than we ever gonna understand. But when we fight and complain about this royally, I denounced all that crap so long ago. It doesn't matter who he was. It doesn't matter who she was. It doesn't matter who they was. It only matters who Jesus Christ is. And as long as we live in that world, the devil loves that. If I can keep them in this world, they're never going to experience that of the world. And he knows that because he was in heaven. He was up there playing. And he's probably sometimes looking at us as believers. Well, look at these silly, silly folk. They have no idea. Them streets are paved with gold. And they sit here crying over it, spending money and saving for a stinking gold necklace. He has to just completely be laughing at so-called believers sometimes. And the stuff that we fight and toil over that is so meaningless to what really matters, which was born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, John uh, 1, 13. In other words, not my will, but his will be done. When we adapt these mindsets, we are completely, you talk about some bad folks. I used to wonder how these little kids can strap on a bomb and go blow up something in the name of their, their God, in the name of their, their whoever. And then we got, you got grown Christians 
who cry if they stub their toe. Lord, why have you forsaken me? Ouch, my toe. I'm like, really? <laughs> That's why I can't stand air, excuse me. But it don't make no sense. We, as oh God been speaking to me for probably like the fast year. We need to grow up. Every time something goes wrong, we ready to throw in the towel. You got little bitty kids over there talking about, oh, I all that nonsense and blowing up and, and think they going to somebody's heaven. It's insane. Ephesians 2.19 says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. With who? The saints. With who? The saints. And of the household of God. You are no more strangers and foreigners. In other words, we was strangers and foreigners. And unfortunately, guess what you learned when you was a stranger and a foreigner? You learned all that silly nonsense. You ain't had no business doing it in the first place. We just got done with the Passover. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house. He, he was raised to, 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 to pray to whoever and to do whatever. That's what he was raised to do. That's why God separated him for 40 years. For the 40, 40 days, 40 nights, and all that stuff. That's why he separate. He had to teach him, like, look, dude, I allowed you to experience that for a reason. That's what I understand about God. I said, why didn't you have me be raised in this boom pile? Because there was things he wanted me to experience about the Gentiles. So when I come into my own and know who I am, he can send me back to them. And it's not freaking me out that I see people doing all kind of crazy sin. Because you take a, a, a I want to use, for example, and I'm not blasting, you take an Amish person, and take them out to a community who's been in that community for all their life, because you know they're kind of set apart. And that's what came to my mind. You take one of them, them Amish kids, and put them in the, in the hood, or put them in a crack house, they will freak out. Seeing people smoke and drink, oh my goodness. However they speak, George, wow. You, what the, what, they, I mean, their eyes, they were like, oh my, they would probably bug out. All they know about is putting on little clothes and going out and working on the farm, and they don't do TV and radio, and they don't know about cell phones, technology. They probably, they probably walk around like, where, where am I? They probably think they're back to the future. But it says that we are no more strangers but foreigners, but, but fellow citizens, fellow citizens with the saints. We were strangers, we were foreigners, but now we're fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God, Ephesians 2.19. It says, and finally, Ephesians 3.6, well, that's not finally, I got a few more, I'm going to try and squeeze in, that the Gentiles should be that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Now this goes back to how I started about somebody inheriting something. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by what? The gospel, Ephesians 3, 6. He said, this is Paul speaking obviously, he says that the Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? We are Western Gentiles. In America, we are Western Gentiles. We're in the West and we're Gentiles. Saved by grace, those that are saved, should be what? Fellow heirs. What's fellow mean? I'm right there with you, baby. You're not leaving me behind. I see Jews sometimes, I say, look at their attitude. It's not that they're rich and we're poor. It's just their, men their mental state is different. They do things different than we do. One of the things they do, the ones that are Messianic Jews, is the feast of the Lord. With that understanding, they, that's how we come to be fellow heirs with them, of the same body and partakers of, the, of, of what? His promise. By being fellow heirs in, in the same body, we become partakers of his promise in Christ by what? The gospel. That's how you inherit your stuff. Is that you understand that you're part of the same body and you're partakers. I said before, God is not a respect of persons. I wrote these scriptures down on a completely separate piece of paper. And we probably ain't going to be able to touch Galatians, but that's why I gave it to you. That's something you can read on your own. Romans 9.11 says, for the children being not... Yet born, neither having done any good or evil. I want you to hear this. For the children being not yet born, neither having done good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. In other words, you can't build your righteousness with your physical hands. Yeah, we do labor. We do works of love. We do things that the Bible tells us to do with our hands. But it starts in your heart and in your mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And it starts there. It says, for the children being not yet born. In other words, kids are not even born. Neither haven't done any good or evil. They haven't done anything yet. That the purpose of God, there's a purpose for them. Because God called them from non-existence to existence. You was called from non-existence to existence. I've talked to people who want to commit suicide. I said, what, what is wrong with you? What do you mean? My life sucks. Dude, this ain't your life. This is a life that you're pretending is yours. This is not your life. Let me show you your life. Let me show you how your life was supposed to be. I can turn to Jeremiah. 
before you was conceived in your womb, I knew you. God knew you. Guess what? You know why I know? Because out of all the little things swimming around inside your 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 your, your dad shot to your mom, they swimming around. All them millions or how many of them that go through, you made it through. He chose you out of all those to come through. That's why it says many are called, few are chosen. And I'm the only person I ever heard preaching like this. Many are called. God calls all of them. Hey, come, come. Everybody who's born are called. Everybody who's living is called. But the chosen ones are the obedient ones. He says, for the children of God, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. You ain't done nothing yet that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but him that call him. That's why you ain't got to prove to nobody you're a Christian. You're here. You have been called from non-existence into existence. You ain't got to prove to nobody you're cute. You ain't got to prove to nobody you're paid. You ain't got to prove nothing. God chose me out of all of those. You was uh, NBA draft person number one, NFL draft number one. He chose you. You are the, the queen. You are the one that he chose. Here she comes. You was chose. Tell the devil. Like, I don't care what you're talking about. He could have chose one of them other eggs. He chose me. So before we did.